Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity RPG tutorial series. Now, in the previous episode, we set up our camera bounds around the screen, and this episode, we're going to handle a topic that people have been asking me about, which is adding sound into the game. Because at the moment, it's very quiet, there's not a lot going on. So we're going to take a look at adding in some sound effects, and uh, I think in the next episode, we'll take a look at adding some actual music into the game and how to control the volume and stuff like that but for the before we jump into doing that we got a couple of little things we just want to fix up here it'll only take a minute or so so when we start the game running here in our main area we see we get an error down here because our bound box isn't set at the the start of the map um, and that's obviously not what we want to happen uh, our bound box for this actually might be a little bit too big but that's okay that doesn't matter too much um but if we look at um our camera so on our if we go to our main camera here and if we go to our camera controller script and open this up in mono develop we can see here and um, what, what we have in our update loop we have it checking to see if the bound box has been found and if it hasn't then it's setting it automatically but what we've got in our, our area here if we go to our main camera we haven't actually set a bound box for the camera so that's why we're getting this little error for just the first um, moment in the start loop, where if we go look at that, in our start loop here, we're determining the bounds box with the camera and getting the half height and stuff like that. Um, so what we need to do is just quite simply, the same bit of code that we're using to find the bounds box, we can just copy this and then paste it in up here, just like that. Then we can save that, go back into the game. And if we play it again, we, just, we should see that we won't get that error. So although that error wouldn't actually be facing the player at any point, and it wouldn't really affect how the game plays, um, we don't really want to have errors in our game, of course, obviously. Um, so if we play now, now we can see that error is gone, and our camera is now uh, handling the bounds just the way we want them to. So that's, that's perfect, that's just the way we want it. One other simple little thing that we want to fix up is at the moment, our canvas here isn't quite as detailed as what we had set up in our in a different area. So what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna save this, this scene here, and then we're gonna jump into our village scene. And if we go to our canvas here, we see we have the slider which shows our health, but we've also got our dialogue manager and our quest manager. And those are things that we want to be able to carry through into all different scenes within the game. And we know that our canvas stays active within the game, but if we start off in a particular scene, we want our canvas to be the same in all of them. So we're gonna make this canvas a prefab. So we're gonna just click canvas and drag it in there. We're gonna do the same with our player, because again, we want our player to be nice and consistent across areas too. Uh, so although we have dragged the player in here, uh, I'm not sure when we created that one. So I'm just gonna delete that prefab, because we're not actually using it. And we're gonna drag this prefab into there, and then we're going to go back into our scenes and go back to our main scene. We probably want to do something for our house inside as well, but I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, but what we can do then is just delete our player and delete our canvas. And then go into our prefabs folder, drag our player into the scene, and we'll drop him down there. And just drag our camera, or sorry, not our camera, our canvas into the scene there like that. And now we have our canvas we'll have our quest manager and our dialogue manager just what we wanted to and our player will be um, the most up-to-date version so now if we make changes to uh, a player in any scene if we save apply those changes to the prefab then they'll be carried over into all our other scenes as well which is obviously exactly what we want to happen um, and there's one other two one other thing that we need to do is within this scene we need to make sure that on our canvas our player health is being referred to our player here. So we'll just drag that into the slot, just like that, and we'll save our changes, and we'll just apply that change here like this, although that shouldn't really, actually, that won't actually have an effect on the prefab itself, but that's okay. Okay, so now that we've set those things up, let's take a look at adding in our sound effects. And we're gonna cover, cover uh, a couple of simple ways to do it. We'll show how to do it just um, when an object is instantiated into the world, and also when we, how we can call it from a script. Uh, which will be a script with a collection of our various different sound effects. So I have our sound effects here. They're now included in the Dropbox link down below the video, which has all the files that we've used for our RPG game so far, all our sprite files and whatnot. So what we're going to do is go into uh, our audio folder, 
uh, if you haven't created an audio folder just create it in our assets folder and we're going to create uh, actually no we're not going to create a new subfolder we're just going to drag all these new effects into there like that let that compile them and then we have our five new sound effects that we're going to use so the first and most simple way of adding sound effects into the game um, would be to show how we uh, add a sound effect when we hurt our enemies so for example if I play the game here we know that if I walk over to one of these guys um, oh, our camera controller isn't following the player I need to set that up as well but if we hit one of these guys we see we get our little damage kind of effect appearing on the screen uh, let me just fix this while we're here we need to make sure that our camera is following our player because it would be very silly if it wasn't um, so now that it's following the player that's fine But so we have that effect being created when we hit an enemy so what we can do is if we go find that effect in our prefabs folder so that's our damage burst effect I'm just going to drop it into our hierarchy here and then what I'm going to do is highlight it here in our hierarchy then go to our audio folder and just scroll down to the bottom and we're going to click and drag the impact sound effect and we'll drag until we get our little kind of plus sign there and now that effect has been added on to our damage burst and we can see it has play on awake uh, ticked by default so that, what that means is as soon as this object comes into the world because at which it, it's been instantiated whenever we hit an enemy as soon as it comes into the world it'll play the sound effect attached to it and we have loop deactivated as well by default because we don't want it to continuously loop as it goes but we just want it to play once just the way it does so we can demonstrate that in action now so now we add it onto it we want to make sure and apply the change to the prefab and then we can delete the prefab from our scene and now if we hit play what we can do is walk over to this guy oh, if I could hit him that'd be nice and we can see we get a little sound effect when we hit him so that's that's just what we want but what about other cases for sound effects so for example we'd like a sound effect when we swing our sword or when the player gets hurt or also when the player dies so at the moment the player just kind of disappears and it's not very obvious what happens so what we can do is add some sound effects and it'll actually liven up the game and make things seem a bit more interesting and to do that what we're going to do is create a simple uh, sound effects manager that will just contain all the audio sound effects and then when we need to call one from any various script within the game we just tell it to find the sound manager and call that script so what we can do is we're first of all in our hierarchy we're going to create a new empty object that we're going to call our sfx manager then we will highlight uh, some very different sound effects so we're going to use the dead heart and sword swoosh effects so I'm just going to click and drag them and instead of dragging them on top of the sound effects manager we want to drag them into an empty space here so that it actually creates them within the world if we were to drag them on top of the sound effects manager it would apply them to that object so instead of creating new objects with each one having the different sound effect attached to it our SFX manager would actually get the components applied to it here uh, one thing we need to make sure is with these three different uh, sound effects if we highlight all of them again we want to disable play on awake because we don't want all those sound effects to happen basically as soon as we start the game if we were to leave them on play on awake when we hit play here there you go you hear we get all the sounds instantly happening and obviously you don't want these random sounds appearing as soon as you load into a new scene every time so we disable that and then we'll drop that into our we'll drag them and drop them on top of the sound effects manager so now they're children of the sound effects manager so the next thing we're going to do is create a new script to hold these items so we're going to go to our scripts folder we're going to create a new C sharp script that we will just call our SFX manager and we'll open this up in mono develop and as I said this is just going to be a simple script that will hold our sound effects in action so we're just going to create a public uh, audio source audio source oh no there's only one s in the middle there so an audio source is just a reference to one of these audio objects within the world because each one of those is the source of some audio so a public audio source so the first one we're going to need is 
a reference to when the player gets hurt, which is our hurt sound effect here. We'll need another public audio audio source for when the player gets killed. So we'll say player dead. And then finally, we need a, a public audio source for player attack. So that's the sound that will play when our sword is swooshing through the air, basically. So that's pretty much it for our sound effects manager. Uh, there's only one extra thing we want to do, and that is that we know that we want to keep this sound effects manager active throughout our scenes. Because once, say for example, if we have our player doing his sword attack, we'll make a reference to the player attack here sound here. So we don't want the player to have to go and find that sound every single time. We wanted to find it at the start. And as our player is being carried through scenes, we want to make, make sure we do the same thing with our sound effects manager uh, here. So what we can do is, if for example, we look at our player controller script, we've previously used this little system to check and see if the player already exists and if one of them already exists delete the new one from the scene uh, otherwise keep going so we're going to do the exact same thing with our sound effects manager and in the start function we're going to copy that and paste that same bit of code obviously we don't want to use player exists so we're just going to create a new private static bool as we've done before and call this sfx man exists so sfx man for SFX manager or sound effects manager and then we we'll say if not SFX man exists then we will set it to be true and we tell it not to destroy and load and otherwise it'll destroy the object so that's all we need to do with that we can get rid of our update loop because we're not actually going to make it do anything within that so we can just save that and now that's all we have to do with our SFX manager uh, the only other, actually, that's all we have to do in terms of scripting, but the only other thing we need to do is, of course, on the SFX manager here, we need to apply that script to it. So once it's finished compiling down there, I'm just going to click and drag this one in here. And now we have these three slots for our different sound effects, so we're going to drag them in there. So our player heart effect, when our player is dead, and our sword swoosh effect. So now we need to set up how we actually call these scripts into action. And basically, it's very straightforward. We just need a reference to our sound effects manager, and then we just need to tell our script at the appropriate time to call that sound effect. So, at the start of our player controller here, we can just say uh, private sound effects manager that we'll just call SFX man, nice and simple. So, of course, at the start, we need to find that sound effects manager so that our player knows which, or our, so our player controller script knows which sound effects manager we're talking about so we'll set that to be sfx man equals um find object of type sfx manager like that and i'm just going to copy this whole bit of code because we need to use this again on our player health manager script in a minute uh, so on our player controller here so we have now we have a reference to the sound effects manager so if we go down to where we do our attack, which is where we have our input that got get, input dot get key down key code J. So that's what that's how we're doing our attack in the game. So what we can do is just at the end of this here, is just say, okay, on the sound effects manager, our SFX man, we want to get the sound effect that is our player attack sound effect, and we want to say dot play. Uh, what that'll do is just play the audio source that has been assigned to the player attack slot which is our sword swoosh effect and it'll just play through it once and then it'll stop it won't repeatedly play or anything like that of course unless you have a loop set up on the object itself um, but that's basically all we need to do there so let's just demonstrate that in action here if we go into the game Once I finish the compiling down there, we should be able to see it in action. Okay, so now you can hear the, the little swooshy sound when we swing our blade. And now if we combine that with, now we know we know much more clearly 
just by sound we missed the guy or we hit the guy with a little thump kind of sound effect of hitting against the enemy so it's very simple and straightforward as i said uh but let's do let's do the exact same thing for how our player gets hurt and our player getting killed so obviously our player getting hurt and killed is all handled in our player health manager script so again in our player health manager we'll need a reference to our sound effects manager so private sfx manager uh, again we'll just call it sfx man we need to do the same thing of at the start making sure we find our sound effects manager and we'll just paste the same bit of code we had before which i had still uh, copied from earlier so it's just the same sfx man equals find object of type sfx manager and then down here in our heart player script so whenever our player gets hurt basically what we want to say is okay now on the sfx man we want to use oh no not that broadcast message we want to use dot player hurt player hurt sorry dot play like that and we can save that and the other thing we want to do is on our players current when our player current health is set to be zero we're deactivating the object in the world so at the same time we want to say to us actually we want to say it just before the object is deactivated in case our script immediately stops running and um, we want to say uh, on the sfx manager we want to run our player dead sound effect and we want to make it play like that so we're going to save that pop back into the game and once it finishes compiling again we'll hit play and if we go walk into an enemy now you can hear we're getting hurt and then we get an extra little death sound effect when we die so there you go nice and simple and straightforward um sound effects are a very kind of simple and basic thing to use within unity and very straightforward and very easy to use uh, but they obviously add a lot to the game makes it feel like a lot more like the world is alive that you're in and actually you're having some impacts you're having some uh, repercussions from all the things you do so thanks for watching this episode and i will be back soon with some more audio goodness and some more rpg tutorials <laughs>